Welcome to this submodule on climate change adaptation and mitigation. In this presentation, I'm going to briefly describe some of the products and services that are being trialled by the Copernicus Climate Change Service to help the agricultural sector respond to climate change. So why is Copernicus needed in the agricultural sector? The Copernicus Climate Change Service, or C3S, is operated by the ECMWF and aims to provide data and tools to help understand the impacts of climate change, inform policy and decision making, and ensure resilience to future climate change. Climate change poses a direct challenge to agricultural practices in Europe. On a regional scale, changing climate patterns can shift crop growing seasons, in turn altering the ripening and flavour of the crops, and therefore the typical characteristics of the products from particular regions. Changing climate patterns can also encourage outbreaks of pests and diseases. Therefore, a long-term plan is essential for the agricultural sector to grow and adapt. A number of proof-of-concept studies have been initiated by the C3S to test and demonstrate potential climate products and services that could be incorporated into a future operational service. One of these is an agricultural project focusing on European case studies. This particular project will operate until the end of 2017 and aims to demonstrate a potential value-added service that could be developed to provide data and guidance for clients in the agricultural sector. The service aims to combine high-quality climate data and agricultural information to create downscaled region-specific crop impact indicators. Modelling will help understand the impacts climate change could have on crop production, crop quality, pest infestation and also help growers manage their crops more effectively. Information will be delivered in a format directly useful for crop growers, managers, buyers and policy makers. The project web portal is still in development but when complete it will allow for download, inspection and visualisation of the study's data. Essential climate variable data are available for all of Europe but these are currently at low spatial resolution and need to be downscaled for specific growing regions or provinces. Essential climate variables or ECVs and biological data are combined to generate a series of bioclimatic indicators. These indicators are chosen based on their importance to agriculture and include the likes of temperature, the standard precipitation evaporation index and the Huglin index which is a heat summation index developed for viticulture. Indicators and local agricultural data are combined to create crop impact indicators, which show the impact of climate change on specified crops. An interactive data visualisation tool will allow you to plot these indicators and future projections. This diagram shows the generalised architecture of the demonstrator project, where modelled climate data Historical weather measurements and crop observations are inputs to a computational platform. Modelling generates a series of bioclimatic indicators and crop impact indicators which are delivered to potential users. The three project case studies focus on vines, olives and forests. These are woody perennial crops that are characterised by high value, multi-year yields. They can take more than 10 years to become established and productive and have an average productive lifespan of 50 years. For this reason, woody crops have climate memory and are responsive to cumulative change in climate conditions. This makes them highly vulnerable to climate change and therefore management of these crops requires a long-term strategy. Non-woody crops can be better managed by changing the crop variety between years or through soil management, water management and pesticide use. Viticulture is a well-developed agri-industry in more than 60 nations globally. The EU leads the global wine market as Europe provides around 45% of wine growing areas, 65% of production by volume and 70% of exports. Grapevine phenology is critical to the wine industry and is sensitive to changing climate conditions. Climate change presents a variety of challenges, including shifting regions of production, growing season changes, and extreme weather events. 
Climate change can cause a shift in harvest date by three to four weeks, resulting in reduced sugar content and affecting the wine flavour for specific regions. This demonstrator project aims to support wine producers by understanding the impacts of climate on phenological stages and therefore the quantity and quality of the crop. This case study focuses on the Bouzet wine growing region of southwest France. The study aims to relate key phenological vine stages to changing climate conditions. These include the timing of bud burst and grape maturity. First, climate information is downscaled to the scale of the wine growing region. Climate and agricultural data are then combined to generate a phenological index to predict the development dates and phenological stages of local grape varieties. Long term, this will help growers to optimise their practices and choose the most appropriate grape varieties to plant. This table shows typical datasets used to generate the phenological index. Olives are of a high value European crop and EU production accounts for 75% of global production. In 2014, European olive growers were severely affected by drought and pest outbreaks and therefore olive growers would benefit from seasonal forecasting at the beginning of the cropping season. This will be particularly useful in areas where pests currently have a low impact but where outbreaks could become more prevalent in the future due to climate change. This demonstrator project aims to support olive farmers in crop protection and to provide guidance for local authorities, grower organisations, agricultural enterprises and buyers. This case study focuses on the olive growing region of Tuscany in northern Italy. Olive trees are vulnerable to pest infestation by a type of fruit fly. Infestation results in a 40% loss of the olive crop resulting in a reduction in oil quality and a shortage of virgin olive oil. The study aims to relate the growth cycle and population of the fruit fly to changing climate conditions. Again, downscaled and modelled climate and agricultural data are used to derive a pest index which will be used to predict future outbreaks of pest infestation. The model used in this study was developed using a time series of 200 pest monitoring points and 80 weather stations in the Tuscany region. The model predicts the initial level of pest infestation based on weather conditions in the preceding season. The key data set surface temperature, the winter needs to be sufficiently cold to kill pests, but late frost can also impact yields. Spatial resolution of the data is a problem as olive trees can be affected by microclimatic variability due to local elevation. For this reason, climate data is downscaled using spatial statistics and digital elevation models. The pest index is derived from temperature data and validated with seasonal forecast data. This table shows the typical data sets used to generate the pest index. Forests and woods are an important resource covering approximately 42% of Europe. The growth in Mediterranean countries is strongly dependent on soil water recharge from winter precipitation. Drought is a key climate impact on forest resources, causing forests to die back. Tree ring widths during the preceding 10 to 15 years can be used to predict the likelihood of drought-induced tree mortality in an upcoming period. This demonstrator project aims to use this information to support local authorities in forest management. This case study focuses on beech forests in the Molise region of southern Italy, which are vulnerable to drought. Tree ring records were acquired for the Italian peninsula and will be analysed to understand the relationship between beech tree dendrochronology and past climate conditions. A drought index will be produced to help improve forest management and maintain forest productivity and biodiversity. The standardised precipitation evapotranspiration index is used to investigate differences between precipitation and evaporation. In the study, SPEI is used to quantify drought conditions during the past 50 years. Beach tree ring widths will be associated to historical precipitation and temperature data, 
through a regression exercise and rescaled to match the climate record time series. Finally, modelled climate and agricultural data will be used to derive a drought index which will help to predict forest growth or decline with future climate change. This table shows the typical datasets used to generate the drought index. In summary, climate change is likely to have a major impact on agribusinesses that cannot adapt quickly to seasonal change. Therefore, it is important to assess climate change impacts on the agricultural sector to ensure sustainability in future. These three studies demonstrate the potential benefit of climate prediction datasets in decision support for the management of woody crops. This C3S proof of concept project combines climate data and agricultural information to produce downscaled regional specific crop impact indicators, which provide in an easily accessible format. It demonstrates a potential service which could be developed to support crop growers, managers and buyers to help ensure future resilience to climate change. Thank you for watching.